Okay. Um, so, so, you know, even before the announcement just now, the Canadians, the Europeans, in, uh, have come out against this and vowed to protect their uh, their co companies, your European Canadian companies that that could be uh, sued un under with this decision. And I'm just wondering how much of a concern that is for the administration, and whether there will be any exemptions at all. As you know, it's not just Europe and, and, and Canada that have companies there. There's some significant Israeli investment in Cuba. So I, I'm just wondering, um, you know, how, you, how you're going to respond to their unhappiness, to put it mildly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think the first thing to highlight is that obviously we've been in very deep and close contact with our allies in Europe and Canada and around the world as we consulted on this decision over the past several months as the Secretary had been shortening the, the period uh, of, uh, of suspension with his previous decisions. I think it's clear if you look in the macro sense, we are, have broad agreement with our allies in Europe and, and Canada and around the world on the policy objective, which is to promote democracy in Cuba and to free the Cuban people from the tyranny that they live under. We are in broad agreement on this. Where we sometimes disagree is on the best way to achieve that. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, you'll need to speak to the European Union and, and to our allies as to what response they will have. But I would like to emphasize that comp European companies that are operating in Cuba will have nothing to worry about if they are not operating on property that was stolen from Americans uh, post-revolution. Uh, so I think the vast number of, of uh, European companies will not have any concerns operating in Cuba. Um, good morning. Um, how does um, so? How are you going to deal with the unhappy Europeans? They've they've now threatened to um, take you to the WTO, um, uh, and so so how are you going to deal with that? And to, and to what extent do you put cube? Um, how does this in any way tie to cutting off any funds um, uh, to Maduro, or how does this enhance the anti-Maduro campaign? Thanks for the question. First, I mean, I, I would defer you to the to the Europeans for for their response. They certainly, you know, we we took a decision today based on our laws uh, and our uh, sovereign concerns for the property of American citizens, and and the Europeans uh, will respond as as uh, as they see fit, and we'll continue to work closely with them on this policy and on the policy in in Venezuela. I think it's important to note that. The decision today is part of the trajectory that started with the, the Trump administration's NSPM-5, which was uh, announced in June of 2017. The objective of that was, of course, to support the Cuban people and to deny resources to uh, the regime, and in particular to the security services uh, in Cuba. So this is part of a trajectory. We have since published the Cuba restricted list. We have since amended the restricted list uh, several times. And this is part of the trajectory of the administration trying to ensure that we support the people of Cuba and not the regime of Cuba. Uh, and going forward, uh, I would say the, the decision, uh, the Secretary's decision was about the actions of the Cuban regime. Certainly the actions of the Cuban regime in Venezuela are part of the context of, uh, of uh, the moment in which we are, in which we are living. And we are very clear, and I think our allies, and this is something very important, the Lima Group, which is a group of uh, 12 countries in the Western Hemisphere, for the very first time this week announced uh, its concern over Cuba's role uh, in uh, Caracas and, and made public its concern and called on the Cuban regime to support the transition in Caracas. So I think it's a very important moment in our relations in the hemisphere as well. Rich? Mm -hmm. How much, um Further, thank you. How much further is the administration um, considering going on its Cuba policy, uh, whether there's deliberations about uh, the terrorism list or, um, I mean, is this a trajectory that you see continuing? I think that's a, it's a great question. I do put it in context of we've been over the past two years uh, building off of NSPM 5 and looking at the various tools that we have uh, to implement the, the President's vision for how we would conduct this policy. I think you're going to be seeing uh, quite a bit more from us and that this is the, the beginning of a, of, a, of a new process uh, on this that recognizes the reality on the ground in Cuba, which is in the past 20 plus years, the, the underlying reality in Cuba has not changed for the average Cuban. Next. Uh, Secretary, can you talk uh, just to follow up on Matt's question on, on the issue of exemptions, are there any exemptions under the decision announced today uh, specifically with any U.S. company that is doing business in Cuba? There, there will not be any exemptions. Great. Kim, do you have time for one more? Sure. Okay. Yeah. How much property 
are you talking about in terms of uh, uh, value, money, and and, and uh, number of properties? Yeah, flip two. So this is actually a one of these questions where I can tell you what I know and then what I don't know is actually uh, a larger. Um, what we understand, the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission uh, has, uh, it's an independent agency within the Department of Justice, has certified nearly 6,000 claims for property confiscated in Cuba with a total value of approximately $2 billion uh, with interest. We believe that value is somewhere uh, in the $8 billion range. Um, the, the most recent estimate we have from 1996, at the time that the law was enacted, that there could be up to 200,000 uncertified claims that were not certified by the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission, and that value could very easily be in the tens of billions of dollars. Uh, but it will, it will depend on, uh, of course, uh, whether, whether claimants decide to pursue uh, legal cases or not. Could I just ask you to clarify what you said? What was the eight, the eight billion? The eight billion is with, with interest. So two billion of Prop of the actual property or what it was at worth the time when it was, it was taken, when it was confiscated, and then right. with interest that amounts to eight billion. Correct. So the total then would be eight billion. Eight billion of certified claims. And then, yes. and then on the two hundred thousand uncertified claims, they haven't been rejected, right? They could still be certified. They could still be if the window were open. Be hundreds of billions. That could be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tens, tens of billions. Yes. Sorry. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.